to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Our collect of the day and all the propers, the, the readings and whatnot, appointed for this, the second Sunday of Advent, remind us that, among other things, Advent is a time of repentance and a time of preparation. And sure, there are lots of preparations going on this time of year. You know, there are stockings to be hung by the chimney with care. There are halls to be decked with boughs of holly. There are hours to be spent addressing cards and stamping them. There's hours to be spent trying to come up with gift ideas for the in-laws <laughs> and then trying to find time to wrap them. But don't worry, it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> but among all of the hustle and bustle, we hear today the prophets cry to prepare the way of the Lord and in the wilderness of navigating all of the expectations that are placed upon us, a voice cries out that every dark valley in which we may feel lost will be lifted up. And all of the mountaintops of fleeting joy, they'll be brought back down to level ground, turned into a plain so that all people, standing equal, may see the glory of God. The voice crying out over all of the noise talks about this great reckoning, this great equalizer, where people of every language and nation, the ones from the valleys and the ones from the mountaintops and from everywhere else, all will see the coming of the Lord. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him, says the prophet as we heard Sorry, we read earlier. Thanks for doing that. Isaiah continued and said, His reward is great with him. His recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He'll gather the lambs in his arms, carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The good news the prophet reminds us of. Good news is coming. It's just over the horizon. So prepare the way. Be ready to receive the Lord when he comes. And St. Mark's gospel account actually starts just that directly. Those very first words, chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then where did Mark start the story? Where, where's this good news coming from? Jesus' story story of the gospel, of God coming in flesh to us, it begins with those voices calling out in the wilderness long ago. The one calling and saying, prepare the way of the Lord. And that voice that was heard from prophet, 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 across time and space, that prophetic call to remind God's people that they are to be a light to the nations, well, it's being heard again from John the baptizer, this one who is out in the wilderness, as we heard, preparing a way for the Lord. He's been proclaiming this baptism of repentance, this reckoning with the human tendency to turn our backs to God. And he's doing this because he knows the Lord is coming. And while John can't change much, he baptizes with water. As a sign of repentance of sin, this heeding of the warning that one is coming who will baptize with the Holy Spirit, not merely washing the outward habits and our apparent flaws, but one who can even change hearts, one who can wipe souls clean, redirect our dispositions, give comfort, giving new life, 
by even feeding the flock and carrying them in his bosom. And each and every year, the church has us prepare for the Lord's arrival in the great feast of the Nativity at Christmas with this Advent season, in which we, every year, get the reminder to repent, to be prepared because the Lord is coming again. Be prepared to meet him when he comes in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Be prepared to meet him when he comes with great power and glory at the end of time. And prepare. Prepare by acknowledging the distractions, the hustle and bustle that takes our eyes off of Jesus. The noises that block out the prophet's call. We're human and we do have a tendency to turn our backs to God. And that's why we repent. We return, orient ourselves back in the way God has called us to go. It's a time to remember our baptism, to remember that we have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and given new life, a life that is not our own, that we have died to sin and self. And in baptism, we're given the gift of salvation, of new life in communion with God that we are adopted into God's household as beloved children who are fed from God's table and instructed in the way we should go. And so Advent is this time, yes, of repentance, of returning, and a time of preparation. It's not a time of starting over, fearful that somehow God might have lost us, but it is a time when God's children need to come back home. Stop trying to feed on slop from saving ourselves and instead come back to God's table to remember that God's salvation is a gift to us and we're always welcome home. Repentance is a turning back. It's a turning back toward the God who gave us life in the first place. And when we allow Advent to just be a, a muted Christmas celebration, not a time of preparation and repentance, then we actually miss out on the fullness of joy at Christmas. The joy that comes not from the pretty lights that will come down sometime between Christmas Day and the 4th of July. <laughs> jo joy that comes not from the feel-good movies that take us back to a simpler time. Joy that doesn't come from the gifts given and received. All of those feelings of happiness will fade. Holidays get harder, kids move away, and loved ones leave us behind. And the joy of exchanging presents is also the sadness others feel when they can't do the same. But there is this great and equalizing gift, the gift of salvation. Salvation that brings true joy, a lasting joy. And even the ones that feel lost in a dark valley... And those soaring on the mountaintops who can't stay there forever, and everyone in between gets to experience it. Now let me be clear and not sound so much like Ebenezer Scrooge and say that no, the parties and the decorations are not bad. What I'm saying is don't let them distract you. Don't, have, don't allow them to tune out the voice that is calling that says, prepare the way of the Lord. And so among all of the hustle and bustle, make time for prayer. Make time for self-examination. And you will experience the Christmas joy much more fully. And pray that our God who sent messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, Trust that God will give us the grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sin, that we may, with joy, greet the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen.